Hello, today we're looking at stem cells and their possible use for medical treatment. Now, just as a reminder or just as an introduction as to what we mean by stem cells, here we've got an example of a fertilized egg, or in fact an egg that's just about to be fertilized. Now, under normal circumstances inside the body, when that egg is fertilized, it goes on to become an embryo, which is a ball of cells, as you can see there. And that ball of cells is what we describe as undifferentiated. All the cells in that ball of cells are undifferentiated. And we've looked at that in a previous video. But the key point here is that those undifferentiated cells can become any other type of cell. They can become any other cell that is needed or is going to be used in the body. Now, these cells under normal circumstances, under a normal pregnancy, go through a period of specialization. And when they specialize, they make specialized tissues, they make organs, they make organ systems, and those organ systems go on to make an individual. So that's under, an, under the circumstances of a normal pregnancy. So here we go, we've got our individual. It looks a bit funny without the face, let's maybe put some features on there. Okay, slightly strange looking, but this is what um, happens under normal circumstances, under a normal pregnancy. Now, the reason why we talk about this, if we rewind and go back, is because these cells here of the embryo, they can actually be cloned. Scientists can actually clone those, make copies of themselves, identical copies of themselves, and they can then possibly be made to make any other type of cell that the scientist might want to make. These cells are actually called embryonic stem cells because they are stem cells, i.e. they are undifferentiated and they come from an embryo. So we can make them into whichever cell we might want. So why would we do that? Well, this is where they might be useful in medical treatment. One example would be there's a disease called diabetes, which means the body can't make insulin or cells in the pancreas can't make insulin. So if we were to make these embryonic stem cells into brand new cells for the pancreas, we could cure diabetes. We could make new cells that make insulin. Or another example is the treatment of paralysis. Paralysis is where we have damage to nerve cells and nerve tissue. And if we could make new nerve tissue, that would help to treat paralysis. But the problem is, where do we get these embryonic stem cells from? We can't just pluck them out of pregnant women. But if we look at something like IVF treatment, which is to help uh, couples who can't have children, that's where we have the development of embryos and we often make more embryos than are needed. And those embryos won't actually have a use if the mother becomes pregnant. So that's a possible source. Now, there is, there are other sources in the body as well. So if we look at bones, if we look inside a bone, there's a certain type of tissue inside the bone, and that's called bone marrow. So we have bone marrow inside the bone, and that actually is a source of stem cells. We call these adult stem cells that can be taken from the bone marrow of adults. Now, the issue with these, though, while it might seem like good news that we don't have to use embryos, the issue is that we can form many types of cells, but not all types of cells. Not all types of cells in the body can be made from adult stem cells. One type they can make, for example, though, is blood cells. They can make blood cells and a few other types of cells, but they can't make all types of cells. There is, however, yet another possibility in terms of making stem cells to cure conditions in adults, in fact, in anyone. And that is what we call therapeutic cloning. This is the idea of therapeutic cloning, and this is how it works. We have an egg cell and we have a body cell from a patient. So here is an egg cell with its nucleus. And here is the body cell from a patient that we might want to treat by, for example, giving them some new tissue. There's the body cell from the patient. Now, what we can do is we can remove the nucleus from the egg cell. And that is literally done by using a tiny syringe and drawing out the nucleus. So we remove the nucleus from the egg cell. Remember, the egg cell doesn't have to be from the patient. So there's our empty egg cell, not from the patient. But what we can do is transfer the nucleus from the patient, from the body cell of a patient, into that egg cell. And we can go ahead and clone it. So the key thing here is that we have a stem cell from the patient. 
And because that cell ha contains the nucleus from a cell from the patient, it will have the identical DNA of that patient. We can then, as we said, go ahead and clone and then potentially make that into any kind of tissue that we want. So we have our stem cells and any tissue that we make will have no chance of rejection from the body of the patient. So that's another possibility for making or another possible source of stem cells. So we've gone through three possible sources of stem cells. We have embryonic stem cells. We have adult stem cells that we that one source is um, bone marrow. It actually can be other places like skin. But we also have, also have another source, and that's called therapeutic cloning, which we've just gone through. Now, while we have various sources of stem cells, we do have to think about ethical issues relating to the use of these stem cells. And here's an idea of some of the ethical issues or issues using stem cells. So we've got the fact that we could transfer viral diseases. We've got ethical issues, as we've said, and we've got possibly religious objections. In terms of our ethical issues, people think it's wrong because embryos could potentially become a person. So we have to make the decision. Are embryos living things? Are they independently living? And we have IVF. That's allowed and legal. But what do we do with the extra embryos that are made from IVF that are not going to be used? Surely it's better just to use them for stem cell research. In terms of religious objections, well, the idea is that God creates all life. And so people might object because it's the role of God to create life and not people. And we shouldn't be messing around with embryos. The key question with the top point there, though, we could transfer viral disease, but do the benefits that we get outweigh the risk? If there's a 10% chance of transferring viral disease, that's a 90% chance that we could possibly cure a disease, for example, paralysis. Okay, so these are the kinds of issues that we need to think about. We've talked about the technical aspects of stem cells and how they might work, and here are some of the issues surrounding their use.